Okay guys, I've loaded a bit, I can't find any dowels or anything the right diameter, so I've loaded a bit of bar up in the chuck and we're just going to turn a pin. Um, I, I've tried a quarter inch shank um, end mill in the hole and it appears, and I've just took the reamer back out again and it appears that that's a dog-eared old reamer that I used. It appears that that reamer's slightly tapered so it's slightly under a quarter inch diameter so if I head for quarter inch diameter with the bar and then we'll just scratch away at it until I get a decent fit into that hole with the reamer with the pin that I'm making so we'll just do that now So eight mil dead on there. We're aiming for six point three five roughly. Should be us on seven mil. Seven point one. I think we could probably go a bit faster on this small diameter. Six point six five. Six point six five. So point three left to come off. Six point three seven, six point three eight. It's going to be too big, so we'll just take a scratch pass down there.
6.25 yeah that's um I think that'll press in at that that in on the vise so what we're going to do now is just put a, a lead on the front chamfer What I've done there is just put some very light grooves in that bottom end where we're going to locate in and that will hold the Loctite, um, somewhere for the Loctite to sit. So we'll part that off now. There we go, there's our pin made. So we'll just get that ready, degreased and uh, ready to fit and we'll press fit that into the bottom of the block. So what I've done there guys, I've not pressed that pin in, I've just pushed it in with my fingers just in the start of the hole, but you can see and I've refitted the, the sole plate on the bottom and you can see now all three parts of the unit all fitted and there's just a tiny bit of clearance but that will stop that bottom plate rotating that will keep it you know in line so that's done the job happy with that next job now we're going to strip all of that back down into its component parts degrease it chemically black it um, oh I've still to decide whether I'm putting a a pin in the side of here or not so that might be the next job I'll bring you back when I've decided what we're doing with that so I might be might yet be putting a pin into this side um, to act as the actual stop against the carriage so I'll have a look at that and I'll bring you back when we've decided what we're doing with that bit okay guys what we're going to do now is turn up a quick pin um, and this is actually going to screw into the side of the saddle itself and not into the um, the carriage stop um, and I'll probably discuss a bit around that once I've made it. So I've got a bit of mild steel or, or carbon steel of some sort in the chuck, um, unknown him again. So we'll just uh, we'll just knock a quick pin up out of that um, to screw into the side of the saddle.
Oh, there we go, guys. That's um, that's that pin quickly knocked up with an M8 thread, a small undercut at the bottom of the thread, and a dome on the front, which is what will butt up against the uh, the carriage stop itself. And I've left a probably about a five millimeter diameter in the centre, which is flat-ish. Um, other than a bit of file over it and pot, you know polish over it, but uh, so that's that done. I'm just working out now whether I pop this up in the mill and mill a couple of spanner flats on so that I can tighten this up into the carriage. I don't I really don't think it needs it, um, so I might not bother with that. I might just give it a a twist with some grips into position uh, with a bit of. Um, emery cloth back to front wrapped around it um, and I think that will do There's no need to be making work for the sake of it so the next job now is to get all these bits disassembled degreased and then into the chemical black alright guys we're at the um, almost the end game with this now so these are all the bits of the um, carriage stop um, completed um, so cheers whoops no that one. Cheers. Right. We've given these a bit of a, uh, a going over with the meths already and that was without a glove on. I've now got a glove on and basically I'm just going to go over those one more time for a final uh, a final degrease wearing the glove and that's because obviously you've got natural oils in your skin and if you get any any oil or grease at all on these wherever you've left the grease mark it won't take the chemical black on it so I'm going to work my way through just like that like I've done with that piece through the rest of them and then I'll bring you back when we're putting them into the uh, into the chemical black solution and that's not that one that's a different chemical black Okay, so that's us ready to uh, to go into the black. So basically, I'm just going to drop all the pieces in. And that's it. We'll leave those in there for... 15-20 minutes something like that we'll see we'll see how they, how they go and um, the various different materials in there we've got mild steel we've got gauge plate which is 01 and we've got unknownium that I've turned the uh, the, the stop pin and the anti-rotation pin out of their they're two separate materials by the way that they turned but all carbon steel of some description so we'll um, We'll leave those in for a bit, and I'll bring you back in a in a while when uh, when we're taking those out and putting them in the rinse. Okay, we're um, I think these have had long enough, so we'll get these out now. Straight into some of Scotland's freshest rain, and it's always fresh. Well, they've taken a decent black out, see these. Lose the glove now, and we'll just give these a a brush off to get rid of the sediment.
should do it. As usual, the next job is to get these dried off as quickly as possible, get the water off them. And then get them with a coat of oil on as soon as possible so that they don't flash over with the uh, flash over with rust. So I'll do that off camera and I'll bring you back when they're all dried off and oiled up and ready for um, ready for assembly. Alright before we oil this one up guys I'm gonna um lock tight this pin in. So this is the pin that I I turned up with some grooves in it. This is the anti-rotational pin. So I've dried everything off. I know it's degreased. I know there's no grease anywhere. So before I start splashing oil all around this one, I'm going to do that. So we're just going to use some uh, Loctite 638 retaining compound, and we'll put this uh, we'll put this pin in before we oil this part up. We don't need a lot because this is a press fit, so just enough to fill those grooves up will be more than sufficient. That'll do it. And hopefully, There we go. I don't think that's coming out of there in any hurry. I don't think it needed the Loctite to be honest, but the Loctite will just make sure that it doesn't uh, it doesn't come out. So I'll carry on with that one now and I'll get that one oiled up and then I'll bring you back when we're doing the final assembly. Okay, we've got everything um, ready now for the final assembly so we'll get on with that um, it's all been oiled up cleaned up helps if you get it the right way around We'll just leave those slightly loose so we get it up on the lathe but it should be flush all round in fact I'll give him a nip at that and see how that fits it's good and then you can see there I've got my anti-rotation pin hole for that and obviously the threaded bar had a bit of a panic attack then there we go <laughs> that's the right way around so that will all screw together so that's the full thing finished and then obviously the pin that I've made is going to screw into the saddle and that is going to come up and butt up against the side of the stop and I'll probably discuss why I've done it that way when we get to the lathe so I'll go over to the lathe now and we'll try and fit that. Okay, so we're over at the lathe. I'm just giving the bed a quick wipe over. We'll drop that on there.
and you put the heel plate or sole plate or whatever you want to call it in place. There we go. That's um, that's all fitted, nice and sturdy. So we just get the pin. So there's a, a hole here that I've already pre-tapped out, just to get all the swarf and stuff out of it. We'll give that a proper tightening in a moment. So I've made, that's why I made the pin very short, so that it's not protruding too much, it's just far enough. And that will now come up and act as a carriage stop. So, a couple of things about this design that I've not really spoken about yet. <clears throat> so why have I put the pin in the saddle rather than in the block? Well, there's a reason, kind of my thinking behind that was, at some point I probably want to adapt this and put some kind of micrometer adjustment on it so I thought if I leave the block just as the block it's not you know I've got maximum space left to do whatever I want to do with it that's, that's one thing whether the pins in the saddle or the pins in the block it makes no difference you've got the same interface with the saddle so that all works okay and another reason I've made this another, you know, another question somebody might ask is why have you made it as wide as you've made it you could have made it half that thickness and that would have still done the job and you're absolutely right it would two reasons for that I've seen so many of these that are homemade where people have made them too thin and kind of the proportions of the block I don't know if you noticed before I put the sole plate on I just dropped that on there and it sat perfectly on the V's there was no it wasn't trying to tip or rock it, it just sat nicely and that's because of the mass that there is holding it in place and there's there's also a good length of location on the V's which means it you know it can't be anything other than located and when you look at some of the ones that I've seen that are made thinner on you know and, and you know, I'm not I'm not criticizing anybody who has a go at this stuff because you know anybody who's made one of these is far better than somebody who's an armchair critic um, so there's no criticism at all but the, the reason I went so broad was because when you look at some of them that have been made you can actually see that they're not sitting on the bed very nicely and that's because they don't have enough length of location so they get a bit twisted they don't sit nicely on the V's and there's a danger with that it's very slight because these are induction hardened or certainly on most lathes they are but there's a danger that you could start messing up your slideways because you're not locating properly on them so that was one reason I went that wide and the second reason and I'll just go and get it the whole idea behind making it how I've done with sunk screws so this top surface is flat is I've now got a block that I can slide anywhere I want up and down the slideway and fit my um, DTIs to it whatever and that whole unit can move up and down the slide way wherever I want it to be and I can drop the clock on it and that's far better than trying to stick it on this bit of the bed way here or whatever else that's totally rigid there um, a really good location for a, a DTI to sit for clocking things into a forge or chuck or whatever so they're the kind of two reasons that I went as wide as, as, wide as I did but you can see there you know, it was roughly made to the width of the <clears throat> the magnetic base, and that was the original kind of design thinking behind it. So that's it, really, for this one, guys. So um, I hope that's been interesting. <clears throat> um, it's certainly increased my uh, turning abilities because I can now set a stop, and you know, if I'm boring down a bore to a depth or whatever before I've been kind of looking down the bore and seeing where I am I can now set a depth stop, work to a depth stop and um, and that's going to be much better and much easier for 
lots and lots of turning jobs. So uh, I'm pleased with that, pleased with how it's come out, pleased with how it fits on the lathe and sits on the lathe. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed that, I hope that's been interesting. Um, if you've liked it, please comment as usual and um, if you're watching and you've not subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel um, to help me build up the the sort of viewer base and the feedback and the comments which I enjoy so um, that's it for this for this particular video and we will catch you all very soon on another video when we'll be making something else.